Greetings viewers, if you click the video link, you're here to listen to me talk about lasers. For the purposes of this video, I'm generally going to be speaking about them in terms of putting it on a handgun. So whether it's your concealed carry or your nightstand gun, what have you, that's going to be more in reference to that. Some of these principles still do apply to things like rifles and shotguns. However, it's just a little bit easier to condense it down and specifically again talk about pistols. And then the information that's provided does pretty much carry over to the other weapon systems as well. For the uh, the short version of it, I do not recommend a laser for your handgun. Uh, there is only one argument so far personally that I have seen or heard that makes any sense or gives any weight to putting a laser on your handgun and that's just eyesight issues. I know some guys that are a little bit older in age, their eyes aren't able to focus properly on the front sight while keeping the rear sight and the target in view and all that, and they have trouble with it. So they have a laser on there, but these guys train and practice and they know how to use it and they know all of the uh, information that I'm gonna provide so it's not an issue. And again, to each their own. If you want a laser no matter what and anybody tells you it's stupid, it's dumb, don't do it, and you do it anyway, that's great. It's your gun, it's your uh, money, it's your time, and uh, just do what makes you happy. So. Again, this video is just my opinions and my thoughts and just to give you something to think about in the event that you're like, hey, laser looks really cool. I saw him use it in this movie and uh, I want to put one on my gun. And you're just kind of seeking out information. So this will be a good place for that. Take what I have to say with a grain of salt and uh, make your own personal decision from there. So let's get into it and I'm going to stop just yapping about nonsense. So for those of you that are familiar with height over bore or you watched my video on it, uh, this is going to kind of already be the same information, but I will get into some more points later, so just bear with me. So we have our pistol here. This is a Glock 21 Gen 4 in OD green. We have our uh, single red laser that's here. Red lasers do come in other colors. You can get green, purple, blue, whatever. Um, again, this is just a little El Cheapo one. So if you notice, the muzzle of the gun is here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. This is going to simulate the bullet coming out of the barrel, right? So that's where this is. It's kind of drooping because the stick's not as wide as the barrel. Our laser's down here, emitting a beam, right? So, so we've got our bullet that comes out of the barrel. We've got our laser that's shooting out into space. And as it sits right now, it's just a straight line. They're parallel. The two will never meet. However, that's not going to work. So you need to dial your laser in to a specific distance so that this laser meets the path of the bullet. So you have a little bit of a visual representation of what's going on here. Yes, I know bullet drop is a thing and gravity, blah, blah, blah. Again, we're talking about handguns, so the distances that this is going to occur in, you're not really worrying about a 300-yard shot. So our round's coming out. We've dialed our laser up to meet the path of the bullet. Well, if you notice, the point between my thumb and the pistol, they're not touching. So theoretically, where the laser is, the rounds would be shooting high. Then we've got our point where my thumb is pinching them together where they meet. That's our distance that our laser is dialed in at. And beyond that point, our rounds are now gonna be impacting low as they continue to travel. And that laser again is going straight up into the air. So essentially the first issue that you run into is once you get your laser dialed in and you have your set distance. So whether it's 21 feet, because that's the average distance for in a gunfight, or this is your home defense gun and you've dialed it into the longest hallway in your house. So that's the longest shot you're gonna to have to make. That laser is dialed into that one set specific distance and as you saw anything before that and anything after that is not going to match up. So why is that significant? Well let's just say there's a chaotic scene going on, your adrenaline's pumping, something happens, you pull your gun out to use it and you start firing rounds and they're not going where you think that they're going and nothing's happening. Why is the bad guy not falling down like in the movies? I put my laser on him and pulled the trigger. Well, that could be for several reasons, and it may not just be because you're not at the prescribed distance that your laser is dialed in at. So that whole concept in theory with the, uh, the single angle moving up and down and, and our rounds are just going to be high or low is great if you have a laser that is oriented with the same axis as your barrel. So what am I talking about? All right, so obviously you can see this is where the bullet comes out. This is where the laser comes out. If you notice, if I put the stick here, they're both on the same axis. So all we have to do is worry about elevation essentially on this laser and moving it up or down. So our rounds are only gonna go high or low. Now, there are other lasers out there, specifically ones made by Crimson Trace, that they go around the grip here. And the laser emitter actually comes from back here. So it's probably a little bit closer to the barrel but the problem here is we are no longer in line with the barrel itself. 
So we have two axes we have to worry about. So that laser is coming from here. We now have to get the up and down and the left and right. So now, if let's say the laser is emitting from this side of the gun, now you're gonna have to worry about your laser being too far over to the right and up or down. So you can see where that can cause even more issues and really kind of throw you off when it's outside of that prescribed distance that you have it zeroed in. I think that horse is beyond dead, so uh, let's move on to the next point here. And that's gonna be using the laser kind of as a crutch. So what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of times I see people put a laser on their gun and it's all exciting because again, it's cool. They saw it in a movie. Great, nothing wrong with getting something because it's cool, but it's kind of important that you understand all the principles and the nuances that go along with it. So I've got my target here. I've put a laser on my pistol. I'm at the range and I'm gonna get ready to start shooting. So let's just do a little demonstration here. So I've got my laser on, right? It's in the center of the target and I go to pull my trigger. Well, what happened? I missed, my rounds went off to the left. So putting a laser on your pistol is not going to fix bad fundamentals and form and snatching your trigger every time you go to shoot or dipping it down because you're anticipating recoil. I hit a damn thing. So much like uh, the left may have you believe, putting a laser on your gun does not turn your bullets into smart heat seeking rounds that are gonna destroy everything in its path and only make headshots. That's not how it works. So if you don't practice and train and have your trigger pull on point and you're, you know, if you're turning the gun sideways and throwing rounds at your target, you're not gonna hit anything. And then you're gonna be even more frustrated because you spent money and time and effort putting that laser on there and looking all cool and you still ain't hitting nothing. So another thing to think about too, let's say you are putting this on your carry gun and you go out into public somewhere and it's nice sunny day out. So for whatever reason, you are just relying on your laser and not your sights and it's way too bright outside. You've got a red laser and you can't find it. And the problem here becomes you put, point your gun, you're, you're on target. If you were to look down your sights, you would see it, but you're relying on that laser now. And that's the only thing you're focusing on. You're not paying attention to the big picture. You're not seeing the, guy, the bad guy's hands. Maybe they're holding a badge in one hand and you're not seeing that because all you're doing is you saw the gun and now you're just looking for that laser. The entire picture, you are now just looking through a toilet paper tube at your target. Where's the dot, where's the dot, where's the dot? and it's bright outside, you're not gonna find it. There's a fold in the clothes and it's kind of sitting funny in there and it's not showing up. And now you are wasting t seconds. You're gonna get yourself hurt or killed because you're now busy focused looking for that dot. And it's even if you're not pointing it at a good guy and it is a bad guy, and all you're doing is where's the dot, where's the dot, where's the dot, that's not gonna end well. And again, that becomes a crutch because all you're doing is you're looking for that dot and it's not helping you and it's actually making things worse and it's slowing you down. As stated multiple times, the average distance for a gunfight is 21 feet. Obviously it's an average, which means that that is not always the case. However, somewhere in there, you may find yourself in a situation where you were within that distance. In that case, point shooting is probably gonna be a lot better bet and you're probably gonna hit the target a little bit better and faster than trying to look for a dot on somebody's chest. So lasers definitely have their place. Don't take this as me telling you don't do it. Absolutely, you're an idiot if you get a laser. What I'm telling you is there's things you need to be conscious of and you need to train, just like anything else. Instead of buying more fancy gadgets and gizmos to you think are gonna make you better at shooting, buy some ammo, take some classes. You can buy a stock gun out of the box with iron sights and with the right amount of training and practice, improving your skill level, you can outshoot somebody that's got a flashlight laser combo with a red dot on top and a range finder and whatever the fuck else, extended mags with the mag well and the side charging handle on their pistol, you can outshoot that person if their skill level is subpar. Olympic athletes don't just wake up in the morning and go win a gold medal and then go back to sitting on the couch eating chips and playing video games. They go out and they practice and they train over and over and over again. Whether they're sick, whether they're tired, whether it's raining and or it's hot, there, there are no excuses. They just get results because they practice and they train. So if you are absolutely 100% intent on putting a laser on your handgun for whatever reason, that's your reason alone, nothing wrong with that. Uh, let me give you these recommendations at least. Don't go buy a cheapo $17 one on Temu or Wish or eBay or wherever. Buy one from a reputable brand. 
from a good manufacturer. It's high quality. You're not going to shoot it a couple times and your laser is going to jump off target. And I recommend that you train with it and you practice with it. If your sole reason and justification for getting a laser and putting it on your gun is the eyesight issue, my recommendation would be to get a red dot for your pistol. I know that's going to be a lot more expensive of an option and some of them are going to cost as much as or more than the handgun you might be putting them on. However, I can tell you that that's probably going to be a lot better bet than again a laser that's only going to give you one point of impact and everything else before and after that is going to be off and you are not going to be sitting there looking for the dot on the person rather than on the firearm presenting it the way that you would in a proper shooting position and stance using all your fundamentals getting that nice trigger press and firing your rounds off and hitting your target so again my personal recommendation don't don't do it it's not going to really do you any good but if you are going to do it get a good one don't get one that's a piece of crap if it's really super cheap chances are it's a piece of crap it may be made for airsoft it's not going to stand up to the recoil of an actual firearm going off and it's either going to fall off of your gun it's going to stop functioning or the zero on it is going to change and it's going to completely defeat the purpose of you putting it on there. So anyway, just a quick video with my thoughts and opinions on the topic. If you think that I missed anything, you have any questions about something or you want to see something in greater detail, just let me know in the comments down below. I'll be glad to get back to you as quickly as I can. I try to respond to all my comments. And if it's something that I cannot just simply respond to with text on the screen, I will be glad to make a follow-up video or even a short that kind of explains or demonstrates the points that uh, I'm trying to make or answer your question with. So anyway, thanks for your time and we'll catch you in the next video.